Hi everyone and welcome back to Miranda Patron Art. I am Miranda Patron and today we have a lovely art stone here for you that I have made and I use the Happy Dotting Company molds with Capital Ceramics Potter's Plaster. Um, they're just my two favorite products. The Potter's Plaster is a lot lighter than the gypsum. Gypsum you can use too, the Ultra Cal 30. Um, but the Potter's Plaster is lighter. It will break and chip though if you drop it. So there's something to keep in mind as well. Um, this is the number three mold that I used for this one. And then I've just painted it with a matte black as a base. This is the color scheme that I'm going to be using, trying to stick to today for our stone. Um, in my friends group, Dot Art Mandalas and more, we've been doing a little challenge here and there just to kind of keep each other busy and motivated just to have something, you know, kind of pressing like, hey, you should do this um, as an opportunity. So this is what we're doing for this week's color. Uh, palette and I think that's what I'm going to go for in the video today. I think it's really good to take some opportunities to try to push yourself outside your comfort zone and see what else you can do. Things you never thought you might or could, you'll be doing in no time. So, um, then you look back on it and think, wow, I can't believe I even thought that was going to be a challenge. So, you might be pleasantly surprised. Alright, so Throughout all this, I will probably be using just dotting tools because I myself am trying to push myself outside my own comfort zone. So I have some of these acrylic rods that I've been trying and then I'll be using my etcher and then some of the normal dotting styluses. So we're going to start off with Indian turquoise, so just a light blue, and that's going to be our large center dot. So I'm going to use that nice big acrylic rod. And thankfully these art stones already have the center dot raised here for you. So you just center it on there like that. And actually on my camera it's a little angled so it looks off centered but you can see it's that. So but that's just a big old blue dot in the middle. Okay, next I'm just going to go with some Snow White and use my etcher. Now we're just going to do some rows of tiny dots all the way around. Our nice large blue one in the center. I've been switching over to the dotting tools a little bit, A, because a lot more of you have them, but B, I'm trying to enjoy the zen patience of going back and forth to the palette more. And I've said in the past I like the brushes because I don't have to constantly keep dipping them as much, but in this time where we're stuck home, shelter in place, we're not allowed to go anywhere, I have a little bit of extra time and I probably could use a lesson in patience myself so maybe even if it's a little bit of forced <laughs> forced training in patience but I think either way it's gonna come out a lovely piece of art because we're enjoying the time. Okay, so it's a row of white. 
All right, now I have this lovely multi-surface satin pewter. And I'm gonna stay with my etcher. So the smallest dotting tool you have. And in between these white dots, I'm going to put down a row of pewter. I don't know, these dots are so tiny today, I might actually have to break out my glasses. Glad I didn't have a lot of coffee. Now I'm just going to flip to the opposite end. I think I can do it. Maybe it won't be a little too big. Let's see. I'm going to st stick with this gray that I'm using and line them right in line with one another. Do another row. And I actually <laughs> got out of sync there and started doing them in between. So it's a little off center, but that's one of the things about art is you're making it your own. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to go back and redo it because some of these are in between as opposed to directly in line. I've been talking a lot lately with people about so-called mistakes <laughs> and how they're not really mistakes you know if you really don't want it there you can paint back back over it with the black or erase it but we were talking about how nothing is really perfect and how that's the beauty in it is that there are flaws in almost everything 
So there are actually cultures where they go in and purposefully put a mistake there because they believe that only something that God makes is perfect. All right, I can see the, the definite beauty in that as well. I think I'm going to switch now to sunny day and I'm going to try this acrylic rod. So the first one that I used, probably should have done this early on, but I'll type it back in. So that's a, over, just over my eyes here, half an inch. Yeah, it's three quarters of an inch, that large one. And so this one is a quarter of an inch. So that's the one I'm using with the sunny day. And what we're going to do is do our plus now that we're farther out. So above, below, side to side, and then a couple on the 45 degrees. Let's see how that looks. So above. Blue. Now sometimes if you're just starting out or you may be somebody who just wants to have guidelines, you can do that as well to make sure that you're lining each other up, lining the dots up appropriately on your stone. Angela also makes things like these silicone stencils that fit on her molded stones so you can trace in guidelines to help you out if you wish along the way too. So you just line up the center stone with that silicone and then just kind of pencil in your lines to help keep your spacing. Okay, so now around each one of these yellows I'm going to do a ring of white. And we're going to let the paint run off the tool as we come around like this so that our dots get smaller towards the base. So at the top I'm going to have to probably dip it once or twice to keep the dots a consistent size up here. But then as we come around the side, I'm going to let it just run out. So you don't have to change tool sizes, you just let the paint run out.
fun summery color combination. I always admire this color combo in people's home decor. And I've had it on my mind for a while to use as a color combination, but I just haven't had the inspiration on what to do for a design with it. Or, you know, sometimes you just don't feel like using those colors. <laughs> so, today the sun is shining. It's like 75 degrees outside. It's beautiful. My son is taking a snooze. So I have some free time to have a seat and paint. I think I'm going to tuck a little bit with the yellow end. So you can see, I just want to show you guys, my spacing is a little off too. So I'm just going to tuck a blue dot down in each of these. But you can see this space is a little tighter than that space was, so I'm going to have to go a little bit smaller. It's not the end of the world. This one, wah, that was a big glob. This one's going to be a little bit bigger. But in the long run, you are the only one that's going to notice. I used to stress out when I started this years ago and redo it. And oh, I only have 17 dots on that side and 11, 12, whatever on that side. I don't count anymore. It just made it more stressful for me. <laughs> Somebody suggested I do dot counts for each of my stones, but... I don't count them anymore. I just enjoy the process and enjoy the time painting. So it's a, it just matters how, if you are enjoying it. If you like counting, then obviously count. But it was just stressing me out, so I stopped. <laughs> All right, so blue. All right, let's go back to that pewter gray. Um, what we're gonna do is kind of make a dot at the top here and then I'm just going to use my etcher side and just kind of drag it down into like a teardrop shape so kind of like a little exclamation point cute one but this way too it will help us kind of offset the fact that the spacing was off if yours isn't off that's awesome the design will still fit in that little section. So I'm just doing a little dot. And then pull it down with a toothpick or something that you have that's pointy, a mechanical pencil. It's one thing though I will suggest is when you're going to put an additional element on, just check around to make sure that it'll fit in the space that you want it to go. I've, sometimes I go to put something and realize, oh, I can't even put anything in between those because I don't have the space. So, just a word of caution. Okay. 
Okay, so now I have the sterling silver from the extreme sheen line. And at the top of each of these, I'm going to add a row. And I'm using the other end of my um, yellow tool. Oh, I had a little too much on there, so I'm going to bring some over to this side for that larger dot there. If you guys are just starting out, you'll get used to how much paint you need on your tool before too, too long. You'll see, oh, I have too much there. i got to drop it off or tap it on your palette. These extreme sheens as well are a little sticky, just to warn you all too, if you're new to these. Just let that string drop back down into your dot before you pull your tool away. Sometimes, too, you'll see, see me steal from the top dots up here, and that way you'll just have less on your tool. See, that one's too little, but I can dip it in this one, and then I'll have a smaller size as I go. But like I said, you guys will get the hang of it, I promise. So now I'm going to use the green, which has a larger, about 3 millimeter ball end. And I'm going to switch to the actual snow white, just the white. And at the top of our gray little exclamation points, I'm going to put a white dot. So it'll be a little bit larger than the 3 millimeters that this gives you. So I'm just swirling it around into a circle. I've said in the past I'm a paint pusher. Just push the paint around into a circle. That's the beauty of these too is you don't have brush lines because you're using tools. Also the paint is a lot thinner so it doesn't leave striations in it. And one more. Okay, now on either side of those white ones, we're just going to put a dot, smaller dot of the primary yellow. Probably with the very smallest tool that you have. start making sure that my paints are closed better and getting little globs in them. So you can see this is a little darker than the sunny day that we used earlier.
All right, so you guys who know me know I love my metallics, so I'm going to sneak some in here with the sky blue topaz, and I'm going to use the yellow other end, of, so the tiny, not my etcher, but the other end, and we're going to do similar to what we just did. I'm going to try to make it a swipe, but I'm similar to what we just did with our are gray. So at the top, we're almost at the edge of the stone and I'm dragging it towards the white dots that we put down. So you can see it's going to make your tail small anyway because you're running out of paint on your tool. Oh, and I got my white. Ah. I'll go back and fix that after. It's another challenge of doing this with the camera in front of my head. <laughs> so what I just did there is I switched to the small end just to finish off the tail. Because I didn't want to drag it into my white again. So you just want to take your time and don't feel rushed. I keep saying this because it's just an important point. Just take your time, don't feel rushed, and just drag the paint out so it stays perpetually wicking to the stone. If you guys know what wicking is. Um, so it kind of keeps contact with the stone at all times rather than flicking it and having it disconnect from the stone. That's what I want to say. I'm just going to dab over this one with a little bit of blue because I got it with my white. Alright, now on either side of those, I'm just going to wipe off my tool but continue the same size but with the, the gray, the pewter gray. Next to it. So down just a little bit. on either side. So somebody asked me how I keep them from running off the stone, but part of this is really just the consistency of the paint, the multi-surface especially, and the extreme sheens, they are a little bit thicker, so they tend to stay in place on the edge, but you will, if you're going to use any of the paints that are a little more fluid, you'll just have to be cognizant of the paint thickness and sometimes I do I have to babysit the edges
See that one was starting to kind of drip off its own edge. And I might even have too much on that tool. So I'm going to come over here and drop some off. And then go back and do the swipes with them. And see that one didn't have enough, so I'm actually going to steal. Oi, still not enough. See, I don't use the dotting tools that much. I really should get better at them myself. <laughs> but it just takes a little bit of practice. Alright, so that was the pewter. Alright, let's go back with that sterling silver. And these ones are a little bit shorter, so we kind of get that effect of having like a fan, fan shape. Yes, buddy. All right, so my son interrupted us, and that was yesterday, so I'm just getting my bearings again back to where we were. So it looks like I was using the Sterling Silver Extreme Sheen, and we were doing the little side decorations here, swipes. And I was just using my smallest dotting tool to create those. Alright, so I was talking about yesterday. I was interrupted by my son and we had a very busy day after that. So I'm getting back into the swing of things here with the sterling silver swipes on the side. And just finishing up the, that decoration there the beauty of painting is you can come and go as you please and it's like reading it'll be back there waiting for you okay I'm gonna grab some more of that sky blue topaz extreme sheen and next to our little sterling silver ones we'll keep going with this So 
So you see as you move down you can just make them a little bit shorter and then you get to that effect. And so I'm just taking my time. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just dipping and dragging out until the paint runs off the tool. So it makes that tiny, tiny tail at the end. And you can also practice on paper first just to see how far with each paint and each tool how far that paint will go for you. I don't know if you can hear that popping and cracking but I have a radiator here that we just kicked on because it is chilly today and I'm in the basement now for the studio but needed a little bit of heat today. It sounds like popcorn. Alright, so that was the sky blue topaz. Alright, now we're going to grab my Indian turquoise again. I'll make one last little swipe underneath all these. So this one's tail is just pulling into those yellow dots that we put down. see the fun design that's evolving out of all this. Alright, now I'm going to go back to the sunny day. And I'm going to go back to this acrylic rod. And I think we're going to put some larger ones in the space here. All around our stone. So I just want to say as I pull up, I'm kind of pushing it up the stone a little too so that the paint when I leave off is at the top. Does that make sense? So I'm pulling it up here so that the paint is up and it has a little space to kind of flow down and not drip off the stone. So I'm just kind of encouraging the paint up and then that gives me a little time to kind of babysit the dot and see if my paint is too fluid I might just need to stop and blow on that one just to dry it out a little bit so that it doesn't run down the stone so it's just a little trick if your paint is a little thicker it will hang on there but that's something I find too with the potter's plaster. Making the stones out of potter plaster, it is a little more porous than the gypsum. So it does soak up the paint quicker. And I find that it runs less as well. So it's just getting used to techniques with your products. I see some people are using quick crete 
now too, like concrete. So that would be a really durable stone, which I haven't tried that yet. So it looks like it comes out of the molds really nicely as well. So that might be an option too if you're looking for something a little more heavy duty. I guess I'm getting the hang of these acrylic rods. <laughs> With the paint brushes it's a little bit easier because you can just paint the circle and then there's not, I guess not as much flow of paint so it just is a little more um, accurate and for me I just find it easier but I think I'm getting the hang of this. So you can see this was the first dot we did and it didn't dribble so we're doing alright. I'm going to let those dry for a minute or two here and go check on my son who's doing the trampoline upstairs making all that painting. <laughs> Alright, so my little guy is dry here, you can see. And it's interesting because I use the enamels. This actually looks still wet and shiny. But I usually varnish over it with a high gloss varnish anyway just to protect my stones and my paint. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed doing this one, using a couple different tools and trying some new color challenge, <laughs> the challenge of this palette. Um, it's nice. I, I'm very excited with how this came out. I hope you guys are too. And I hope you're doing all right during this quarantine time. I know it's not the easiest to pass the time and some of us are alone. Some of us have children running around <laughs> interrupting, but that's okay because we each have our own situation and we're going to make it through this together. And I'm here. Feel free to say hi, ask any questions you have, and just say hi in the comments. I'd love to hear from you all. Or you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and always my website. You can just go there and find other color palette combos um, or links to my videos or links to anywhere I am on social media. So, all right, you guys, I hope this was fun for you. Let me know in the comments what you think, and I look forward to hearing from you. Take care, everyone. Stay safe and healthy. I'll talk to you all again soon. Bye for now. <laughs>